Thank you for choosing Lebe Stark. Your decision to engage with us is giving us the chance to spread the love, power, and the possibility of kettlebell training. You are the reason why we can do what we do, helping people discover the world of physical culture. If you want to let other people know about your learning experience with us, then leave us a rating on Google. Your coach is waiting for you. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag here. Welcome to another stream. Let me do the usual check if to see if everything's rolling. Yeah, that sounds good. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another stream. Today we have three things that we're going to do. First of all, I'm going to show you three great tips, great exercises that we will then transform into a workout that you can then use to boost your kettlebell journey. Matter of fact, the idea is giving you something that you can actually use to then move forward. Number two is I'm going to share you a solution, how I can maybe help you, how we can maybe help you. If you say, listen, Gregory, that solution that you were presenting is awesome, but I want to take it a step further and you want to get coaching. This is when we're going to talk about an awesome course that I got in store for you. And number three will be a little Q&A. If you have any questions that pop up during the stream or you have any questions right now that you want to ask, throw them into the live chat and then I'll do my best to answer them. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen without further ado, let's get it started. And on my account, everything's running, but I always want to make sure that the system is running as well so give me a couple of more seconds Ooh, that sounds great okay ladies and gentlemen three things that we are going to learn today matter of fact i'm going to show you an awesome workout it's a little bit advanced but i think that you can pull it off especially exercise number three is a little bit advanced but i'm going to also going to show you a easy version of that exercise so you can use it and get started right away so solution number one or in our case exercise number one is the hand-to-hand -hand swing matter of fact if you have a kettlebell with you get your couch out of the way grab your kettlebell make sure you can see me and then you can follow me i always like love to do these so-called follow-along formats where i would teach you the exercise and then you can follow me as well. So let me demonstrate the hand-to-hand -hand swing first. Watch me. The beautiful thing about wearing ear pods is that you have to make a conscious effort to stay as focused as possible, not wiggle too much, so that they don't fall out of your ears. That's actually a great um, drill. Put your earbuds in and see if they don't fall uh, to the floor, then you're doing it properly. <laughs> so let's check out the hand-to-hand -hand swing. You place your kettlebell half a meter in front of you. Boom. Now, if I look down, I see that the kettlebell has a small distance to my feet. So what do we have to do in order to swing the kettlebell with our hips? We have to imagine that our arms are like hooks. I grab the kettlebell, but I don't move it. We human beings are handsy creatures. So everything that we grab, we think, okay, we have to move it with our arms. In this case, with the swing, we don't want to. So. Imagine with me, and you can follow me. We have an imaginary kettlebell in front of us. So I grab it. I pull the kettlebell into the backswing. Now my full arm connects with my body. Okay? We call this the arm-body connection, ABC. Now I extend my hips, just pushing my hips forward while keeping my arm connected. As soon as I, as soon as I reach full extension, boom, where I extend erect, this is where 
I lose connection. My arm loses connection from the body. The kettlebell travels. I'm grabbing it at the apex where gravity wants to do its thing and pull it back down. I grab it and switch hands. The kettlebell drops in my left hand. I'm waiting to reconnect with my body. ABC goes again. Now I'm pushing my hips back. And then I repeat that motion. One of the most crucial parts that you want to understand is the hinge. And we're going to practice this right now. So shoulder width stance. You stay right where you are. Now extend your arms right next to your body. Now push your hips back. If you need a cue, use your fingers and push them into that bony structure that you feel right here, which is your hip or your pelvis. Push it back. And now you should feel some tension in your hammies and in your glutes, in this part, your rear legs. Now when we come up, boom, tension. So this means when I'm on top, fully extended, my knees are extended and my hip is extended. What does that mean? I just stand erect, stacked on all joints. Let's try this again. Push your hips back. Your upper body comes forward. Now, do you feel that tension again? Then you're doing it right. Come back up. Let's check out one of the common mistakes that many people do, and that is they just lean forward. So the movement does not occur in your lower back or in your spine in that regard. The movement occurs in your hip. Imagine as if you want to close a car door with your butt. What are you doing? You're not leaning forward. You're pushing your hips back. That's the cue. You push your hips back. Or if this helps you, imagine like you want to uh, do a vertical jump from where you're standing right now. What are you doing? You're hinging. Okay. Pushing the hips back. Or the second, the final cue that may help you is you want to sit down. What are you doing? Nobody's sitting down like this. We all sit down like this. We engage with the hip first. So let's jump back to the kettlebell. And imagine now with that hinge motion, okay, we want to understand how the swing really works. Is it's a hinge motion per se. That's the beauty of it and that's the secret. So now let's use just a couple of reps and then see and, and we'll go from there. You're ready? 10 reps in three, two, one. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mark the bell. So if after these 10 reps, your arms are tight, then you're moving the weight with your arm. Try to avoid this. It's not a roll, it's not a high pull, it is a swing. Remember, we grab the kettlebell, but we don't move it. So that is the hand-to-hand -hand swing. Let's jump into step number three, solution number three, tip number three, X, uh, I'm sorry, repeating so many times that I'm getting lost, number two, of course. Okay, solution number two, tip number two, exercise number two. That is the bent row. Now, what is beautiful about the bent row is we have now learned the hinge, right? Remember? Pushing the hips back, upper body leans forward. Great. Now, let's use this movement pattern for a different exercise, which is the bent over row. So I'm pushing my hips back. It's the same thing. And then I'm just rowing. So watch me first as I demonstrate the exercise. So what is now happening is we're hinging. And we also have to bend our knees just a little bit because I want to reach down to the kettlebell. And depending on how long your legs are, 
it may be that you have to bend more than I have to. So don't confuse this. So let's try this. Now, different from the hand-to-hand -hand swing, now we place the kettlebell approximately alongside the middle of our feet. So when I look down, the kettlebell or the handle is right placed between my legs or between my feet. So now I'm hinging. Try to follow me now. Again, we use an imaginary kettlebell. We don't use the kettlebell per se right now. An imaginary kettlebell. I grab it. And now I'm pulling my arm up. And nothing else is moving. This is the tricky part for beginners. Nothing is moving. You don't stand up. You don't bend your spine. You don't rock back and forth with your hips. You stand tight. Everything's tight. And you are just moving your right and left arm respectively. Now, I'm showing you, demonstrating you the exercise now with my left hand so you can see it better. I'm grabbing the weight so that my uh, back hand is facing towards me. As I'm pulling the weight up, my palm, my backhand, no, that's the palm, right? My palm. My palm is facing to the side or towards me now in, in, in that area, okay? So now the palm is facing me backwards, and as I'm pulling the weight up, the palm is facing sideways. That's the word I was looking for, okay? So watch me again. You pull it up. Palm is facing sideways. And as I'm pulling my elbow close to my body, I should feel some tension in my back right here. If you don't, don't worry about it. Maybe your kinesthetic sense is not as developed right now. Take some time. The idea is that you should feel it in this part of your body. This is that big back muscle. So now let's try it with the kettlebell. Whenever you're ready, let's start with the right hand first. We do three reps with the rest side, the right side, and three reps with the left side. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. You're ready? Three, two, one. One. Two. Switch sides. One. Two. Park the bell, stand up. Now, I can maybe already hear you saying, Gregory, cool, but I feel it here in my lower back, or I feel it in my legs. Totally fine. It's a little bit of a disadvantage from the row because we try to work the back, but at the end, it's a full body exercise because we feel the lower back. In that stance, we feel our legs. Don't worry about it. You're still working your back, but that's the beauty about the kettlebell. You almost work your full body. That's why I love this thing so much. Okay? So this is the bent over row. Now solution number three, exercise number three, tip number three, the windmill. Okay, now it's a we got to get a little bit fancy, but very important, please. I don't want to confuse you. If I'm confusing you, please yell it into the screen so I can hear it. It's so important because if we uh, confuse it or we overcomplicate stuff, we rob ourselves from joy and we rob ourselves from, most importantly, consistency. So now let's check out the windmill. Let me demonstrate the tough version first, okay? The advanced version, and then we're going to take a look at the easy version first, okay? So watch me. So that was the advanced version. Now let me show you with the same side, the easy version. Watch me. And as an important side note, 
before we jump into the windmill, maybe you hear my breathing patterns, this and that stuff. And you're like, wow, how do I have to breathe? Well, I believe breathing is highly important. I mentioned before, don't overcomplicate it. Don't confuse it. Breathe naturally. Forget how you hear me breathe. Now it's just all about the exercise. And once you've mastered the exercise, we can then always take a look at how breathing works, okay? So, let's check out the movement pattern of the windmill. What I like to do is, I like to call it the deconstruction of complex complexity. I've learned this from my mentor, Steve Carter. What does that mean? If you have a complex exercise like the windmill, we want to break it down into its phases so you understand how this exercise really works. And then if you make a mistake, you can come back to the phase and scrutinize the phase and be like, oh, ah, this is where the mistake is, okay? Because most people just see this movement and they're like, okay, wow, now how, how do I have to do it? So let's start from the bottom. No weights, no nothing. Follow me. You stand shoulder width apart like I am right now. Now both of your feet, you turn them to the left side about 30 degrees. Okay? If you, watch, if you watch me from the back, this is how it looks like in your case. Boom. Your feet are pointing to the left. Okay? So feet are pointing to the left. Now what's happening right now, as I'm facing you with the camera, it feels a little bit awkward, right? And maybe that's happening to you as well. You feel like, oh, there's something a little bit awkward right here. Yes, because you've switched, you've switched your stance. So if I'm switching the stance, according to my feet, my body should supposed to look this way. Now it feels more natural. If I turn to you again, it's, it, it's a little bit tight in here, so I have to face in a diagonal perspective or direction, right? So now what happens, crucial point, I'm engaging in a side hinge. Remember from the first exercise when we were doing the hinge? Great, now we do a side hinge. What does that mean? I'm not pushing the hips backwards. I'm pushing the hips sideways. Watch me again. You stand erect. Both of your feet are pointing to the left approximately 30 degrees. Now you push your hips to the side. This is a side hinge. And you also like to call this the Instagram pose, all right? You ladies maybe notice. If, if there's a, a couple of ladies out there in the chat, woohoo, yeah, you know this pose, right? <laughs> so guys, it maybe feels a little awkward, but that's how we have to do it. So side hinge, boom. Remember, Instagram pose. Now, what's happening in my body now? I am now uh, safeguarding my lower back. Now watch what I can do. I can rotate the upper part of my spine while the lower part of my spine, which is the weakest link in the chain, is locked. That's the idea. So as I'm engaging in a side hinge, watch me what I do and try to follow me. I now look towards the ceiling. And now my chest is facing towards you. Now my left hand or my left elbow, I put it inside my thighs. And now I can use some resistance and some uh, resistance from my, from my leg. And now I can even rotate a little bit further. So now I look to the ceiling and now I extend my arm. This is the low, low position of the windmill if I have the hand in the top fixation overhead, okay? So from this position, I'll come back up. Ooh. Looking sideways again into that diagonal position. Now, let me just turn around real quick so you can follow me and see what you're supposed to be doing. Shoulder width stance. Now, place both of your feet to the left side approximately 30 degrees. Now, I'm looking towards that diagonal perspective. You follow me? Now, push your hips to the side. And as you can see, I'm bending my knees a little bit. You don't have to keep them locked. Keep them uh, loose a little bit. Soft knees, unlock them. Now I rotate my body, my chest to the mirror now to the front. I bring my left elbow inside my thigh and my right arm extends to the ceiling. And sorry if I always have to move my ear pods in my head, I don't want them to fall down. You don't have to do this. 
Now extend your left arm as well. And now watch what this looks like. This looks like a windmill. And now I come back up. Boom. And I'm facing that side again. Now, I'm assuming that we have people in the chat who are picking up the kettlebell for the first time. And I always like to talk to you guys first. The advanced folks know, know what's up. So now let's grab the weight with our left hand. You grab it, boom. Now my thumb and my, my palm, excuse me, is facing towards my stomach. Now let's do this. Turn your feet to the left side, engage in the side hinge, rotate the bell. So now my backhand is pointing towards my thighs. Now I extend my arm and I move down. And as soon as the kettlebell touches the ground, this is where we finish. And now we come back up. Rotating the kettlebell in the palm towards the stomach again. Try this again. One more. Put it down. Now the way I did it in the advanced version is racking, pressing overhead, and then engaging into the windmill. If you already know how this works, try it. But now for out of time restraints, we don't want to look at this uh, overhead version now. We just want to use the lower hand version, the low windmill in that regard. And if you're doing it right, you should feel some tension in your hamstrings and in your sides. Okay, great. Now, these three exercises, ladies and gentlemen, let's put them together into a little workout. Because, hey, why not move a little bit? Oops, <laughs> Gypsy got scared right here. Gypsy's a little scared, right, boy? Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is I'm giving you a simple and easy workout, which is so powerful. Um, and this system is so powerful that I want you to use it on a regular basis. And that is, we're going to do one minute hand-to-hand -hand swing. You see the big timer with the zero behind me? This is the timer. So we're going to engage in one minute of a hand-to-hand -hand swing. After we finish the one minute hand-to-hand -hand swing, we put the kettlebell down and then we rest a little. With rest, I mean you loosen up a little bit. Okay? We want to relax the muscles because if we have relaxed muscles, blood can uh, flow through the muscles way better than if we are tight. So we relax a little, breathe, breathe, relax, boom. And then we're going to engage, engage into a bent row, bent over row. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set the timer then for one minute again. We're going to do a bent over row with the left side for 30 seconds and then with the right side for 30 seconds. Then we put the kettlebell down again, we relax, blah, blah, blah. And then exercise number three, the windmill, we do the same as with the bent over row. We split the volume equally between left and right for one minute, okay? Great. So whenever you guys are ready and gals, grab your kettlebells, hand-to-hand -hand swing in three, two, one. Let's do it. Matter of fact, if you have to put the kettlebell down and you're not able to manage the one minute, don't worry about it. Put it down. Other than that, try to keep working. Use your full body. Think about the hinge. Push your hips back. And then extend the hips forward. You probably watched me and you're like, hey, Gregory, what kind of grip are you using? Mine. <laughs> the typical grip. I don't want to confuse you folks. So watch me how I'm swinging it. With the so-called, we call this the front hand. Seconds. Put the kettlebell down, park it. Now, relax a little bit. Take a sip of water if you have to to stay hydrated. Relax. Loosen your body. Relax. Relax. Awesome. Get ready for the bent over row. 
in three, two, one, right? 30 seconds with the left side. Let's do it. Use tension now. Try to keep your body as tight as possible. Cost a little bit more energy. But for this exercise, we want to engage into high tension. Switching sides now. Other side, get ready. Couple of more. Last one. Now stand up. You probably feel some tension in your lower back. That's totally normal. Now relax. Woo. Loosen up that body. Loosen up your arms. Loosen up your legs. And keep breathing normally, naturally, the way your body's telling you how to breathe. We always believe in the mantra where we say, listen to your body and trust your inner signals sometimes the inner signals are just a little bit obvi obfuscated there's a lot of uh, fog but once we clear the fog our signals are able to send again and then we can listen properly final exercise ladies and gentlemen the windmill low windmill three two one let's go Grab it, point your feet to the left, right arm to the ceiling. Now, side hinge, rotate your chest to the front, come back up, breathe out. Make sure that right arm stays extended, do not bend it. Unless you have to correct your earbuds. One more. Now switch hands. Your feet are now pointing to the right side. Left arm to the ceiling, same. Well, I can feel those hips from my workout. Whoa, ha <laughs> ha. I love this, I love this feeling. It tells your body that you're alive. One more. Put it down, relax, boom. So here you go. What you have now seen is a powerful workout. Three exercises. We did the swing for one minute, the bent over row for one minute, and the windmill for one minute. Combined, this is three minutes of volume. Now, you may be breathing, you're like, wow, that's awesome, but I'm breathing, so no worry. Now you take a breather, a couple of seconds or maybe a minute or two and then you get back at it and then you do a couple of rounds and there you go you got yourself a wonderful beautiful and powerful workout that touches all bases and one thing that i want to hammer home home a very important uh, point that i just mentioned in one of my recent videos is start your kettlebell journey now and if you have already started keep going i'd like to mention this powerful mantra from my mentor dan john anytime i get the chance to do it and that is my mentor dan john share with me there's two secrets to success number one is to start doing and number two is to keep going and then dan john follows up with most people don't keep going so consistency is the key to success and in today's political climate that we live in right now, I want to highly advise you and even command you at this point to take your fitness matters into your own hands. Do not make it dependent upon a gym chain, upon a, a coach, or upon anything else. Make it dependent upon you. Buy yourself one of these 
And why am I saying this? Because everybody jumped on these things in 2020 when the pandemic broke out because they were like, wow, I need something to live. Why, why, why didn't everybody jump on dumbbells or barbells? Because they realized this thing gives you the most bang for your buck because it touches all bases of human performance. Nothing wrong with a dumbbell or a barbell, but a kettlebell touches more bases of human performance at the same time. It gives us so much bang for your buck. That's why I'm telling you, and I'm all even spitting into, into the camera as I'm holding this brave heart speech <laughs> to start your kettlebell journey now, because if something bad is, is happening down the line in this current uh, time that we live in, because we live in crazy times, at least you can stay strong, stay fit, stay fast, stay healthy, stay stress-free or have a valve where you can release the stress in your brain with movement because the kettlebell is so awesome in relieving stress it's such a beautiful thing for uh, uh for for a healthy mind that's why you have to grab one because we don't know what happens down the line and you want to make sure that you are prepared right going into the battle is important but being prepared to go to battle is even more important so, this is my Braveheart speech. One of our subscribers mentioned, he was like, or she was like, hey, you're having this awesome Braveheart speech. I love it. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we went through the first half of uh, this video. So now, you, know, you may be asking yourself the question, like, Gregory, wow, I like this. I like that stuff. And I even like the kettlebell, and uh, I like the way you teach. I like the way you coach. And maybe I want to take it a step deeper. So here's where I'm trying to tell you, um, a, or I'm trying to show you a great solution. If you're like, Gregory, I need a little bit more. So let me just um, switch the systems right here. And uh, let me, let me uh, give me just a second. As I am switching the systems, um, here we are. Bada bing, bada bam. I'm now sharing my screen. And now you see this. If you want me to help you, ladies and gentlemen, I am willing to do so. So, I got something for you. I got something for you. Now, this uh, workout that we just did, remember? The hand-to-hand -hand swing, the row, and the windmill is part of our course, which is called 90 Gains of Kettlebells. Now, I mentioned, if there's some ladies in the chat, awesome. Ladies, we're rooting for you. This course is also for you. You can use this course even though I've designed it for men over 30. If you are a man over 30 and you're like, hey, you know what, Gregory? I wanna take this kettlebell thing into my own hands and I wanna build some muscle and I wanna get strong and I wanna get a lean, I call it the kettlebell physique. Um, matter of fact, I like to make this distinction. I always categorize people in very simplistic terms into two body types. One body type is the wolf, this is like me, lightweight, quick, nimble, fast, and then we have the bears, big, strong, massive. So um, not, the kettlebell gives you a physique that favors a little bit the wolf. Doesn't mean that if you're, if you're a bear, doesn't mean that you can't live with a kettlebell because I see some massive bears swinging these things. But from the get-go, how a kettlebell is designed, I would say it favors more this lean athletic type of wolf physique. So 90 Gains of Kettlebells is a powerful course that I wanna show you right now. So what you're getting is three months of training and coaching because 90 gains, right? So you wanna make some gains and it takes you 90 days. So that's the idea, very smart of me, ha 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 ha. So three months of training and coaching and this is what the system looks like. So if you choose to enroll in this course, which a lot of people have, I think 90 gains of kettlebells is a breadwinner because many, we have a lot of men over 30 watching this channel because that's, that's kind of like my age. So people tend to gravitate towards this channel who are a little bit similar, I get it. And uh, I think this is such a powerful course because it packs you, it packs everything into wall into one uh, uh, decent chunk. And that is when you watch this right now. This is the course dashboard. So what I have created is I call it the Leberstock Academy, and this is an academy online system where you can sign up. Matter of fact, if you sign up for this course, you get access to the academy, and this is the online course dashboard. So whenever you have or wherever you have internet, 
you will have access to this course. And on the left side, you see all the chapters and the lessons. And in the middle, you see the video that plays. So it's just the same thing that you're now seeing me do, but it is a little bit more systematic with a, with a, with a um, more targeted approach towards building muscle, towards getting fit. A lot of workouts, a lot of training, a lot of explanation. We take it to the umph degree. If you compare it with what I do now, you like what I did now, you're gonna love what I do here. So this is the core setup. And we also talk a little bit about nutrition. And when it comes to nutrition, guys, I believe in keeping it simple, stupid. I love the KISS principle, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. So what we're especially talk about in the course is we talk about your caloric needs, we talk about your protein needs, we talk a little bit about sleep, and we talk a little bit about supplements. Now, uh, there's massive channels out there who do a way better job than I do when it comes to nutrition or protein or whatever and putting it all together or sleep or I mean I'm not I'm not a sleep scientist forget this or supplements okay there's guys who know all, know everything and all about supplements in this case it's just a basic approach that works for everybody or that works you know in the fitness industry we always say it depends okay when somebody asks a question most of us have to say at a certain level well it depends but I also believe, and I think I'm not the only one, I also believe that based upon the experience that we as coaches can gather, we can give some certain guidelines and say, listen, this works for a lot of people, so it may work for you also. So 90 Gains of Kettlebells has a mission, and that is you want to build solid and practical muscle. Remember this wolf-bear comparison? When I talk about practical muscle, I talk about muscle that you can use. I don't talk about muscle that you blow up like a bodybuilder because the kettlebell does not build muscle like a bodybuilder. Yes, it is a weight, and yes, you can use it like a bodybuilder, but that's not its main purpose. So we wanna build muscle with kettlebells for the next 12 weeks, right? For the next three months, and you don't have to be stuck in traffic to hit the gym. Now, why am I saying this? Because I mentioned before, take your fitness journey into your own hands, please do it. Take responsibility, the responsibility of keeping your body strong, healthy, solid, fit, fast, stress resistant into your own hands. Believe me, you won't regret it. There's nothing wrong with the gym. But many of us, especially men over 30, have more responsibilities in life. And there's one currency that we spend on a daily basis and that we will never get back. And that is time. So how about me telling you, you know what, brother? You can save some time and still make great results. And I would even go as far as to say you probably make even better results. That's what it is, man. So here's what you need if you want to engage into the course. A kettlebell. Duh. <laughs> and if you want to make the most out of the course, you need two adjacent weights. What do I mean with adjacent weights? I mean, for example, a 16 and a 20. All right? One that's a little bit lighter, one that's a little bit heavier. And of course, you need discipline and dedication. Yes. Remember when I talked about consistency, it is the key. It is the major key. Listen, your swing can be broken, your windmill can be bad, and your row can look like the hunchback from Notre Dame. If you are consistent, you will get results. And yes, of course, we always have to consider technique. Especially, uh, yesterday I had a great conversation with Arseny Jarnakov, honored master of sport. He's a legend in the game. And he said, you know what matters? Wait. If you start jerking or long cycling or snatching with a 32, you better have your technique down pat. But if you're just starting out and you're trying to really get a hold of the kettlebell, you maybe start with a 16 or a 12. Hey, if it's a little bit off, don't worry about it. We're not talking about perfect technique. And matter of fact, this is very important that I want to share with you right now. And that is, I always say, technique takes collateral damage when you build up the intensity. I repeat that. Technique takes collateral damage when you increase the intensity in your workout. And you know what? That's totally fine. There is some wiggle room. As long as your technique doesn't break down, it's totally fine. 
So nobody's into perfect technique, guys. Please believe me. Yes, it's awesome to master technique. But when you go a little bit further, maybe sometimes you mess it up. And you know who cares? Let me show you the room with those who don't care. With those who care. Nobody does. So here's exactly how this will help you. You have simple and high quality workouts. As a matter of fact, I had a session yesterday with a client and he said, Gregor, you know what? Uh, 90 gains of kettlebells gave me an energy level and it gave me some kind of strength back that I didn't have before. As a matter of fact, her par his partner said, hey, you know what? I've never experienced you like this. Keep doing whatever you're doing. And this feedback yesterday was like, wow. Yeah, I know. yes, that's what's up, man. Kettlebells do this, yes. But I think programming does this as well. I'm not saying that you can take this workout that I showed you, run with it, and have success. But I think you can make more out of your time if you follow a designated program. So what you're doing is you're engaging into a maximum of 30 minutes per session. So you'll train three times per week and sometimes you uh, train two times per week and at the end, in your final month, it, it, it uh, takes the notch to the next level and then it's sometimes it's four times a week. But the idea, as I mentioned, is to build quality muscle, practical muscle, and then we also want to follow the laws of hypertrophy. There are certain laws of muscle building that we have to abide by if we want to profit from building quality muscle. And I mentioned this, sometimes I get ahead of myself. You follow the laws of muscle building and it helps you achieve a lean kettlebell physique. But as I mentioned in my Braveheart speech, it also gives you more function, more power, more strength, more energy to combat what is maybe down the line. I don't want to be an alarmist, but let me tell you one thing. When we were on vacation last week, our car broke down. So in the middle, of this, I was, we were in Mallorca in Spain, and uh, that's a small little island, and we were, we were close to the airport. Thank God we were close to the airport. So we parked the car, we went to the beach, awesome, so we went back, and boom, this thing doesn't start. And it doesn't start, and it doesn't start. And uh, it's funny, I called them up and I said, hey, you know what, the car's broken down. And then ah, somebody shows up in 45 minutes. And I love my Spanish brothers and sisters, but uh, 45 minutes in Spanish is not 45 minutes in Swiss. <laughs> so we waited one hour and 15 minutes. And then finally the car came and I kept cool. I kept cool. Even afterwards, we had to call a taxi. So we were running around looking for taxis and you try to stop them and they're like, hey, they, they wave high and they keep going. And matter of fact, when we grabbed the taxi, he rolled this window down. We were like, hey, I, I need to go to the aeroporto. Uh, you have time? And he was like, Wah. aeroporto, prego. I, I speak a little bit Italian. And he was like, Okay, get it. <laughs> that was so funny. It might the, aer the, the airport, the airport, the airport was just five minutes from where we were at. But he was thinking, he was like, ah, I'm not sure if I want to work. <laughs> but uh, to make a long story short, as we were running around to get a taxi, the catastrophizing happened. So these emotions came up. I'm like, oh, if we don't find a taxi, if we can't switch the car, we don't get back to the, our homes because it's like 20 minutes far away. What are we doing if it gets dark? What are we doing if the, the car rental closes and we can't get another car? But I, I told myself, listen, relax. Relax, bro, relax. And it was my duty to relax because Angie next to me, she was kind of like a little bit getting wild. And if I was getting wild as well, yeah, then we have the disaster. So I told her, nah, let's relax. We're going to get through this. And part of it comes from kettlebell training. Because when you engage with kettlebells, kettlebells challenge you on a level where it's probably a little bit different than barbells and dumbbells. I'm not saying that that stuff can't challenge you neither. I'm not saying this. Please don't get me wrong. But there is something special about the kettlebell when it challenge you, challenges you when you go into strength endurance where you have to combine both things. And you have to constantly tell your body to keep it quiet, relax, relax, relax. As you are going and as these, uh, sometimes your brain then lights up like a Christmas tree and then you have to tell your brain like relax, relax, it's all good, it's all good, so you just got to keep working. And that helped me. So that stuff helps you in real life situations. So what is the value? So um, there is an inherent value that you're getting when you buy this course because production and design went into this course. So let me show you. 
90 Gains of Kettlebells is based on our in real life coaching system. So if you're like, Gregory, you know what? I like this, but I want to do it with you. You show up to the gym three times a week. There's people who do this. They, they buy these uh, high ticket personal training uh, coaching systems, coaching programs. They show up to the gym three times a week. For three months, that costs you up to $3,000. Matter of fact, why is that so? You're like, why is that so expensive? Because you want my time. And if you want my time, I have to charge accordingly. So if you want my time three times per week for three months, that's up to 3K. And the system that I use with our clients, what do you think? What kind of system I'm using in a core system? Do you think I'm using a less proficient system in our courses because it's not as expensive? I'm not stupid. I'm using this, these systems that I've incorporated. Matter of fact, we had a workout with Svetlana Daniliuk and other heavyweights from, from Switzerland in a workout. And they liked the system that we put together. They were like, ooh, I like this. It's a system that we have developed. So that's the value. You pay up 3K. You get some extra workouts. And you know what's awesome? They're ad-free. If you followed us on YouTube and you watch us and you do the follow-along format, awesome. I want you to do the follow-along format. But hey, there's ads on it. And sometimes people complain. They're like, oh, Gregory, in the midst of the session, I have to click the uh, skip ad button. Well, that's how the YouTube system works. But the, in the core system, no ads. And, all, and, and what you're getting as a bonus is Steve Carter seminar. I'm going to dive into it a little bit later now. That costs you $700 if you want to uh, attend it in person in a group setting, which is worth it, let me tell you. So the total value of this system that you're getting is 3 k 7 3,700 US dollars. So what you will have is one of my biggest kettlebell learning experiences in the course as well. Matter of fact, almost all of our courses are equipped, equipped with Steve Carter's three hour workshop that he had with us in 2019 because I can't stress enough how much my sensei Steve Carter has influenced my teachings. If it wasn't for him, I'd probably still be swinging kettlebells thinking that I know I'll probably be like unconscious. I'd, I'd be swinging kettlebells with an unconscious incompetence. I'd be like, I think I know how to do it. But it looks, I look like a clown. When I started out, I looked like a clown. So thank God Steve Carter showed up. Thank God he took time out of his schedule. He was like, okay, I'm going to visit this dude in Switzerland who, who has a loud mouth. <laughs> that was awesome. So um, what we have is a three and a half hour seminar in the course. And you can watch it. And listen, the course alone, the money that you pay for this course, just this one hour, if you zoom in a little bit, this, in the bonus content, this, this three-hour seminar is worth it. Matter of fact, you know, I, I, I can give you so much experience from my clients. Somebody said, hey, Gregory, you know what? The seminar with Steve Carter's alone is worth the price. It's worth the course. You learn so much. And... The pivotal moment was when I was watching his stuff again. And I share this with our coaches as well, or, and, and with our clients as well. And that is, if you are in a group setting and you, are, and you experience the coaching session, this is awesome, most bang for your buck. But you know what? If you have the chance to Rewatch this whole seminar with you being a part of it and you're now the outsider watching it the learning experience goes to the roof because as i was re-watching steve carter's seminar i heard him say things that i didn't hear in the seminar as well you probably experienced this you re-watch a group coaching session or whatever and like oh did he really say that oh did she really do this did she really mean this wow so this learning experience goes to the roof and it, man, I wish I could share this emotion that I had, these aha moments when I was watching his stuff. I was like, now I get it. And you know what's funny? I always say there are secrets. And yes, marketers use this tactic. Watch the five secrets of kettlebell training that I'm going to share with you that nobody else knows. Well, it's a great marketing tactic. But you know what? There are secrets. There are true secrets in kettlebell training. And if nobody shows them to you, you don't know what, what they are. For example, I showed you the windmill, right? With the top fixation overhead. 
there's a special secret how to insert your hand into the kettlebell and bring it over the head so that the kettlebell rests on your frame or on your skeleton and not on your muscle so you can do more windmills. This is a secret. If nobody's teaching you this, you don't know it. Man, I'm such in the mood right now. I probably buy this course myself. <laughs> and you know what? There's one more thing that you're getting, friend. My friends, you're getting free monthly coaching. So I'm not joking. And as my desktop and my table is breaking apart because even my table can't believe what I'm offering you right now and it's breaking apart because like wow Gregory are you stupid are you crazy to offer this kind of material <laughs> free monthly coaching I call it the school of physical culture and just to give you a little backstory just, I'm gonna make it quick sometimes I'm deviating a little bit I hope I'm not confusing you guys please tell me yell into the iPhone or into the screen if I'm confusing you um Oh, I, I, wanted, I wanted to say Verkhoshansky, Krajewski. Dr. Vladislav Krajewski was a pivotal figure in the beginning of kettlebells uh, at the end of the 19th century. And he was, uh, he took kettlebells from Europe. And then I think he's one of the, and he and Uncle Vanya or Ivan Lebedev and Pitla, these three folks, I think these three guys are pivotal as to why the kettlebell became a part of Russian culture. This is, I think, based upon the history, as, as far as I know it, I think these three dudes, three dudes are one of the main reasons. So he created something. Dr. Krajewski created something. He called it the School of Physical Culture, where once a week, I think everybody can join the gym. Everybody can join the class. Doesn't matter if you're poor, if you're rich, if you're whatever you are, everybody come together and let's have a great session. That's the idea behind the School of Physical Culture. School of Physical Culture. It happened once a month. When you sign up for the course, you buy the course. Once a month, you get an invite. It's for five people only, so you have to be quick. But you get an invite in your email that says, hey, Frank or, or, or John or whatever. Hey, your special invite is here. We have the School of Physical Culture happening this Thursday. Then you can hop on with me on a Zoom session. You'll see me, I'll see you, and we'll have a great workout. This is called the School of Physical Culture. And as you can see, my good friends, our members, Matt and Sean, they were part of it. And it was awesome. Awesome. That was just a recent session that we had. So it happens almost every month. You get the invite, you can join for free. And just recently, one of our clients told me, he said, you know what's awesome about this course and about this uh, session is I get to talk to you, I get to hang out, I get to work out with you, and, and I get the motivation vibe. Listen, I'm like this when I coach as well because I love this. I'm so passionate about it. And that's what I'm gonna share with everybody as long as I can. So, oh, went a little bit fast. Oh, went a little bit fast, I messed it up. Oh, I messed it up. I told you that the value of the course is 3.7, 3,700 US dollars. That's a little bit too much, right? I can't charge this because it's a self-paced course. So boom, here's what I'm charging. 147 US dollars, ladies and gentlemen, or a payment plan of 59 US dollars per month for three months for 90 gains of kettlebells. And if you're like, Gregor, you know what? I like this. You find the link in the description right now, click that link and join the course, enroll now. But please be aware, once you click the link, there's a timer on it that tracks you. And I think the timer is like 24 hours or seven hours or something. Once the timer runs out, the enrollment is closed. Now you're like, Gregory, why are you doing this? Well, because deadlines work. It's as simple as that urgency urgency works and why am i doing this because sometimes we procrastinate we're like oh gregory i like that but you know what i'm gonna do it next year not nah, not happening brother you decide you hop in you enroll right now that's what's up and that's what you can do now i'm guaranteeing you something i call it the no gain no pay guarantee make it simple because i'm talking so much it's easy if you don't like it you get your money back Simple. You, you train, you, what you have to do is you have to follow the program for 30 days straight. And after a month, you're like, Gregor, you know what? I train for a month and it's complete BS. You get your money back. Why? Because I only want to keep your money if you're happy. And today, in today's day and age that we live in, in today's climate, every in investment has to be thought out. And I do not want to keep your money if you think the investment that you put down the line with us, with labor stock and with me, is not worth it, I don't want to keep the money because it's not worth 
keeping the money and making people mad or giving them a product where initially they thought it was okay and then they feel like, no, it's not, okay? Simple. Send me an email, Gregory, I don't like it. And you know what? You can keep the course. <laughs> because maybe a couple of days later, you're like, hey, you know what? Let's give it a shot again. And then all of a sudden you like it and then you feel remorseful, remorseful. Then you walk around to your gym and you tell everybody about Leberstock, how cool we are. That's how we do it. And you leave an awesome review at Leberstock. You're like, hey, these guys are awesome. Matter of fact, I got the money back and I'm still using cores, still having awesome results. <laughs> you get what I'm saying, guys? Man, I love this. I love doing this. So enroll now, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we finished in 56 minutes. That's awesome. So uh, we still have 25 people in the chat. Uh, do we have some questions? I'm now checking the live chat, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have a question, let me know. We want to use the, the last five or 10 minutes for a Q&A. And I'm here to answer your questions. So please let me know if you have any questions. So we have, uh, I want to say hello, Pablo Antonio Medero. Hello. Fit with ease. Good tag. Good tag. Hey, fit with ease. I've saw your name a couple of times. Awesome. Thanks for joining and thanks for rocking with Lebestock. So here we go. Kyle uh, Wills. Hello. I'm new to kettlebells and when I do swings, I get pain in my knees. I think it's from widening my knees so it doesn't hit my legs on the way down. Any advice? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get where you're coming from. Um, you're probably pushing the knees out a little bit, right? And then it gets that little twisting motion and you're like, ah, that hurts a little bit. Try the following. You take, from the get-go, you take a little bit of a wider stance than shoulder width apart. Because what you want to teach your body and teach your knees is not to go outside. Trust your body that you'll hit the target. And how can you make sure to hit the target? Think about following a medial line, a middle line. This is where the kettlebell is swinging. Okay? So you have to actively push the kettlebell towards the middle line of your body and then swing and switch on top. Now, in my case, it happens automatically. But if you don't engage into that middle line and it's a little bit outside, yes, there is a tendency to hit your legs on the way down. So stand a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. Focus on that middle line. Once your knees stop wiggling and moving, you try to inch a little bit closer, take a, a step uh, more towards shoulder width apart, and then you keep swinging. And you should make it to the way where your knees stop uh, swinging outside. But it, it happens to beginners. It happens to many people who are not used to swinging weights because I understand. First of all, there's weight falling down. Uh, and then we think about, oh, if I keep it to the middle line, I'll probably hit my jewels. <laughs> no, you won't. So don't worry about it. You have to reconnect your arm to the body and keep the middle line distance. Uh, good question, Kyle. YouTube, oh, my brother, YouTube punk in the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, brother? I hope you're doing fine, Jason. Good to see you in the comments, man. Uh, he'll probably address the question. Yeah, I did. I did. What's up? Jason knows what's up. Jason knows what's up. Fit with ease. Here, ha, ha. Is it here, here, or ha, ha? Awesome. Commenting is dangerous, my brother's in the chat. Oh, man, you have a golden logo. Wow, you've been around for a long time, my brother. Awesome. He joined the Kettlebell Club. That you, that's something that you can do on YouTube. Matter of fact, if you're like, hey, you know what, Gregory? This 147 is a little bit too much, but I want to support your channel. You could join the club. That's another thing that you can do. Kettlebell Secrets. That's what's up, man. It, sound, it sounds so funny, right? But there are secrets. That's what's up. Moira, what's up? Nespresso, please. Oh, I like that username. I like that username. Nespresso, please. Hey, question. Uh, I've been doing kettlebells throughout all COVID and I'm totally in love. Awesome. But I noticed that my muscle gain has been minimal. Just to be sure, doing get-ups, swings, etc. That's normal, right? It's a very great question. Listen. Um, two things. And I want to make it easy. I want to make it easy. I always have to tell myself, don't overcomplicate it. Two things. Weight is crucial. If you start out with a 12, which I believe most male beginners can, after a, a couple of time devoting time to kettlebell training, you probably have to upgrade the weight because you're now strong enough for the weight and your technique has improved to a level where you don't even feel the 12 anymore. That's when you're, where you should upgrade. And I believe most men can 
at least with our style, I call it the hybrid style, where we where we where you use one kettlebell for lower part uh, lower body movement as well as upper body movement, so overhead as well as down low. Most men can use a 16, 20, and 24 as so-called evergreen weights. These are weights that you will use forever until you die. So upgrading the weight, that's one thing. The second thing that I want to uh, address, my main man, Nespresso, please, is ballistics such as a swing are metabolic conditioning exercises. So yes, they can build some muscle, especially if they are a little bit heavier, but you would want to consider a swing more on the strength endurance side of things. So if you are doing get-ups, which is something different, this is more of a high tension exercise. That's what I would do a little bit more. If my focus was muscle, I would do more so-called grinds, more exercises that, not, that are not into ballistics as much. And matter of fact, that's what we do. And it's a great question because that's the same thing that I was thinking. That's what we do in 90 Gains of Kettlebells as well in this course. Because we use ballistics on a minimal level and we use more grind, so-called high-tension exercises. Yet at the same time, you have to realize, you have to realize one important fact. And that is, if you come from a bodybuilding perspective and if you come from a typical traditional gym training perspective, you will probably lose some muscle. This is probably bound to happen, yes. Because in a gym that is totally set up to build muscle, you will probably lose some of it, but remember, you will gain on other fronts, okay? I hope I was able to answer your question. So, uh, Pranit Rain, I think Pranit, I've saw, your, I've saw your name again a couple of times. Always great to see folks in the chat who follow us for longer sets of time, longer sets of time, for, for a longer time. If I'm mistaken, excuse me, but I th think I've seen your name as well. Uh, I'm very new to kettlebells and I also want to get back to the workout after some time. I feel I'm not able to do reps more than 10. I also feel my 12 kg is but heavy. Hmm. So it, it's a little bit, so what is the question? Um, it, if you're only able to do 10 reps, I think that's, that's fine. 10 reps is fine. For example, if you do 10 reps with the left side a strict press, for example, that's about one minute and 20 seconds. That's, that's great time on the tension. So don't worry about it, okay? You don't have to go up to 15 or 20 reps. It, now here's one of the important aspects where we can say well it depends on your goal so what is the goal want to get into strength endurance want to get into a competition want to lift heavier weights for longer sets of time depends on what you want to do but hey if you mess around with your 12 kg and you're able to do 10 10 reps totally fine just keep doing it and most of the time people are not as as consistent throughout because you're now saying i want to get back to kettlebells so this implies and i don't want to uh, uh uh, insinuate anything but it implies that you have been away from kettlebells right so if you've been away from kettlebells for some time what this means and what may happen is that you lose strength you lose muscle and then once you get back at it it takes some time to get back at it again and then maybe the 12 kg feels heavy again so that's why i mentioned in the beginning being consistent is a key to success if you are consistent throughout the 12 kg will become lighter and always keep this in mind, folks. Consistency is so much more important than anything else. Everything that I just taught you, everything that I'm showing you, please, guys, consistency is the driving factor. And Pranit, if you're like, hey, but I'm still not sure with the 12 kg, then downgrade to an 8 or downgrade to a 10. Matter of fact, we now have 2 kg increments, and depending on who you ask, 2 kgs make sense. Okay? Uh, YouTube, oh, my brother, sounds like they're deconditioned. Ah, you know what I love about this, Jason? Sometimes you say, you say, it takes me 10 sentences to say what you said in one phrase. Man, you're the coach, my man. <laughs> exactly. You're probably deconditioned and then weight gets heavier. I gotta go. Good to see you, Gregory. Thanks for the shout out, brother. Always. So, ladies and gentlemen, no more questions in the chat. Thank you so much for joining. I want to just make it uh, clear that, uh, please, if you're looking for a system, if you're looking for consistency, because like I mentioned, consistency is the key, uh, key you probably need a system. 
a system that can guide you to consistency. Because maybe you've experienced this. Maybe you're walking around doing whatever, and then you always feel like you're somewhere in the air. You're somewhere like, okay, maybe I do some curls, now I do some swings, now I do some presses. So what a good system is showing you is it shows you a dedicated way. You don't have to do the heavy lifting with the exercises and with the program. That's my job. You do the heavy lifting with the kettlebells. You sign in to the course. Here you go to 90 gains of kettlebells. You sign in and then you just follow the program. And the beautiful thing about it is, as you can see, you have these strength, you have all these phases cut out into dedicated weeks and sessions. So it'll tell you, hey, now it's week one, we do access, we do workout A. Now it's week two, we do workout uh, B. And as, as, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the powerful thing about a system. So if you're interested, join the link, uh, click the link in the description. It'll take you right to the page. You can buy the course right now. Enjoy it, have fun. Don't worry about it. You'll get your money back if you don't like it. But please, enroll, build consistency, more power to you, and enjoy. Taking a last look into the comment section. That's it. Moira, thank, saying thanks. Thanks to you guys as well. Thank you so much for joining. I really enjoyed it. So, I wish you... Ladies and gentlemen, a happy evening, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.